So the focus of this talk is tips for FRCS last minute. How are you going to going to focus in this key time, like last one a, a one a one month of your um, last one month of uh, of your uh, of your preparation? It's it's dead easy, but you need to know about it. So. So I have divided into game of K's. So you, uh, uh, I don't know whether you guys are aware of this game of thrones, but it's, it's um, uh, and it's the same thing applies to this game of K's. So have a look. Um, if yes, my kids have done so many technicalities in there. So there are few Ks you need to know. You need to know the exam. You need to know the examiner. You need to assess what examiner wants you to say. You need to know yourself, how much you know. But my understanding is if all of you have passed part one, I think the knowledge is there. And that's what I've been told by all my mentors. Yeah. The knowledge is there. It just it it just now to repeat it and regurgitate it. You need to be aware of what is happening in your surrounding because exam happens in less than ideal places. Exam happen in 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 quite stressful environment where will where you will see five six people talking to each other at the same time. So you need to not to be easily distracted. Okay. You need to you need to be aware of what is happening, and you know you need to know the pace of the exam as well. You need to control it. Five minutes can be gone very easy and very slow, depending on what come out of your mouth. So you need to know this, and there are things which you must know. Okay, these are the things which you if you don't know, please don't go through the exam because it will be a waste of your attempt. Okay. Now we come to the next part. The success of the exam. It's a British exam. Okay. I run a disclaimer here. We do not represent any Royal College. We do not represent anyone. We are, we are a group of people who actually has been helped by various other people and hence we are helping others to pass the exam. There is no conflict of interest here. It's a British exam. You can rule this exam is by dividing it. You can't spend a lot of time onto one, one subject and not, not spending time on the other subject. Because if you, if you do that, then you will never be able to finish the curriculum and you will never be able to come to the cliff here. So divide and rule the exam. Yes, when you divide it, it will make it easy. It's a, it's a UK Irish based curriculum exam as well. So it, the, it, doesn't, it doesn't care what you do in the exam. It doesn't care what, what you know for one particular topic or what comes in your particular country. This exam will be based on what comes in UK any. And they will ask you that thing, like Dupuytren contracture. It's in, it's it's only Dupuytren is a disease of Caucasian origin. You will never see it in UAE or Arab. But this will be asked repeatedly in the exam. In as I have said, the must know of each section are not exhaustive. If you divide it into each table, you will have 10 or 11 scenarios where you can predict the whole table from. And once you have them scenarios, then you can very easily pass the exam. You will not be able to pass each part of the exam as the exam has been divided in such a way. But what you need to do is to pass them part of the exams which you have prepared really well so that you come so that when a section comes 
where you are not aware of what is happening, you're going to compensate there. Yeah. And trust me, whatever happens, that section will always come. Whether you regurgitate both Campbell and Miller and everything, that section will come in the exam where you don't see what is happening. Examples I have put there, say for example, in upper limb, there's a must-know topic, carpal dislocation. If you don't know that, don't go to exam. For pediatrics, there are four bigs. DDS, Sufi, Perthi, CT. If you don't know that, don't go to the exam. Trauma, ATLS, pelvic fracture, adult path, tumor principles, avian, basic sciences. Basic sciences, you need to know everything. There is no shortcut in basic sciences, unfortunately. Anyone who has passed the exam will tell you that basic sciences, they spend the most of their time in basic sciences. And this is where we say you must know your exam. So the, so the game of K's come in here. So I just hope that you guys remember what are the K's I was talking about. Let me know the exam, know the examiner, know yourself. You have passed, so you have the knowledge. Aware of the surrounding, know the pace, and must know subjects in each scenario. If you don't know them, there is no. Okay. Planning. Planning is very important. Girls want a man with a plan. So does every exam, everyone. Yes, you have to have a smart plan. Smart means specific, which is specific to this particular exam. Not specific to orthopedic curriculum. It's specific to this particular FRCS exam, which has very specific questions and a specific answer to each of them. You have to have measurable information for that. You need to know the depth of that exam and you need to know the breadth of that particular. So if you, if you know it, if you know it too little or too much, that's another, a waste of positive energy because you, unless you know how much they are expecting of you, you're going to keep on reading even carpal tunnel. There are books written for carpal tunnel. So you just need to kind of have a measurable approach. Again, you need to see that you are confident. You are confident, but you are not overconfident. You are humble, but you are not too humble for them to think you are humble because you don't know. You need to be firm. So have this. You cannot be overconfident, but you cannot be really humble where people start thinking, oh, he, he doesn't know. That's why he's acting like this. Because that's a general thing that, that is applicable here in the UK. Um, obviously, you guys, if you don't have a, um, you don't, you've never worked in here, you would not know that. Anyways. Now, everyone gets confused. Everyone gets stressed. When it comes to this exam, confusion is an absolute paramount. And stressing I stressed out, Firas stressed out, everyone stressed out. Trainees, person who get the gold medal in the exam gets stressed out. When you are getting stressed out, when you're not in control, give your control to someone else. Let someone else guide you. We all have mentors and they guide us. I have few people in my hospital who were post FLCS and they were guiding me. And they were telling me, it's like a mirror therapy. Unless you look yourself in the mirror and you see what you're doing, you will never know what you're doing. So the exam is for the exam. You all have phones that can record. You put the phone in front of you, you record it and you listen and you yourself will find 100 mistakes in that recording in five minutes because you will say, you know, what am I doing here? I'm just being really, I could have done it 10 times better. Get all the help needed. Get all the help what you need. Money, don't worry about the money. In grand scheme of things, money should not be your goal. This is a life-changing exam. When I gave this exam, I don't know what tier system works there. So there is a tier three specialist here, and then tier two and tier one is the top consultant. No one question. That brings you from a tier three specialist, which is answerable to two further people, comes to a tier one specialist. And I think the same applies within you guys as well. So you will from 
from a clinical space list, you will become a tier one consultant once you have this. All the best. So remember the mirror therapy. It is very important. Yes. Now we come to the questions. And that's a small talk so that you, you guys have, a, have an idea as to what needs to be done, how to plan further, and what needs doing. Anyone has got any question, please raise the hand and I will, I will answer it and then we'll come to the topic. Uh, Firas, you can, you can then actually stop recording from now onwards. Okay, fine. Thank you.